Allah Ta'ala wa Barakatuh. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and everyone. Um, I would like to invite all the participants to be seated as our program will begin shortly. And also make sure uh, that your phones and handphones are in silent mode. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala ashrafil anbiya wal mursalin wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in. And let us begin our session with the recitation of the Kitab Al-Fatiha. So good morning, everyone. Welcome to the site of Wanakib al Library Lecture Number Six. So I am Ahmad Zaki bin Rashid, your moderator for today, and we are thrilled to have you all here, and we have an exciting and informative session ahead of us. Before we dive into our main presentation, I would like to take a moment to express our gratitude to both of the organizing committee, ISTEC, and site of Wanakib al Library. And without just support, event like this wouldn't be possible. Let me give you a quick, quick overview of today's event. Sahid Umanakir al Atas Lecture Series is a lecture on the library collection with the objective of promoting the collection and its research by the students, researchers, and community as a whole to make use of these germs and treasures for their study and research. And this is the sixth series of the lecture. And our speaker, our speaker today will talk about Malay Manuscript Collection in Said Mamanakir Atas Library, Istega IOM. Here is a brief overview of what we'll be covering today. First, we will have a presentation session by the speaker. After that, we will open to the floor for the question and discussion. For those joining the online session, feel free to submit your question by typing them into the Zoom or YouTube channel. And we will make sure to address them during the session. Without further ado, let's welcome our speaker, our fantastic speaker, Dr. Wan Ali, Elias Wan Yusuf bin Wan Mamat. He is now the Senior Academic Fellow in his tech. And he was a practicing librarian at the National Library of Malaysia. Uh, from 1975 until 2006. Prior to his retirement in 2006, he was the Director General of National Library of Malaysia from 2005 until 2006. In 2009, he joined the Department of Library and Information Science, Kuliah of Informa Information and Communication Technology of IOM. He has published many conference papers, journal articles, and books. His current research is in the areas of Malay manuscript, preservation and conservation, and mosque library. He is currently a committee member of the Historical Society of Malaysia and head of Islamic Library Group of Librarians Association of Malaysia. Um, Dr. Wan Ali, so you may start your presentation. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, first, I would like to express my thanks to Brother Zaki, who is the chairperson uh, for the today's talk. Alhamdulillah, today we can meet uh, for the sixth time in the series of talk relating to Istek Library. I would like to welcome all who are attending these uh, uh, sessions, whether either in the library or online. And I uh, uh, hope uh, it will be quite a useful talk uh, relating to uh, the topic for today. 
So the topic for today that I will be talk on will be on Malay Manuscript Collection in Syed Muhammad Nagib Al Atas Library. Is that I I U M? Actually, uh, Estate Library has been a very mysterious library, even for me in the past. When I was in the National Library, including while I was uh, working in the Malay Manuscript Center, we feel that in Estate there should be many manuscripts, including Malay manuscript. Uh, but during that time, the uh, estate library was not open to the public. So we were, most, uh, those who are interested in Malay manuscript were curious, what are the Malay manuscript in estate library? So when I joined the University, I I U M University. Uh, I will I, I I take special interest in trying to understand what are the collection in the estate library. Alhamdulillah, uh, in this long course of time while in I I U M, uh, University. I was able to uh, uh, scrutinize Malay manuscript collections. Uh, by uh, encouraging first, encouraging my students uh, to see and catalog in simple, uh, at simple level about the collection in the. Uh, estate library and later I embark on uh, cataloging in a more detailed format the Malay manuscript in estate library. In my power of uh, point presentation, I put here Sha'en Sidang Fakir oleh by Hamza Fansuri written in early in uh, 17th century, a very, very rare manuscript in Malaysia. Another is Kitab Hil Al-Zil by Nuruddin Ar-Raniri. This kitab was purposely written by the author uh, in order to to reject the ideas uh, proposed by Hamza Pansuri about the doctrine of Wujudija. So these are two of Malay ministry in the library. So now I'm going uh, uh, to the introduction proper. Uh, when we talk about uh, uh, civilization and when we talk about uh, when we are talking about Islamic talks we definitely had to understand the richness of the information available in manuscript including Malay manuscripts because basically in simple term civilization is the progress of the uh, society's concern from a backward uh, society to a more progressive society from a society who are gatherers of product to a society who stay in uh, cities and ports and relating to Islamic uh, civilization we uh, were informed that uh, Islamic, in Islamic civilization, the uh, one of the criteria that is considered as pertinent or important is that 
in Islamic civilization, uh, the stress has been on books, on writings, and book production. So in the course of Islamic civilization, we can find so many books written by the past authors or ulama. And many of those uh, authors, in fact, uh, were people who, who were able to uh, uh, create something special, like uh, uh, certain uh, of the authors were creators. Like uh, uh, they create this algebra, they create this globe in order to uh, estimate the, uh, the 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 way uh, we can uh, guess the time for prayers and so many other things, including many who develop uh, laboratories and medicines. So all this show that uh, in Islamic civilization, manuscripts and thoughts of the authors were recorded and we should be uh, uh, whole firm to uh, protect them from being destroyed. So as a result of that, Malay manuscript in general or Malay manuscript are considered as primary resources for research. Unfortunately, uh, especially in the modern time, Malay manuscript or Islamic ministry, even Islamic ministry in general, they are not the main focus of uh, resources for research by the present uh, academicians. So with, uh, with that introduction, I would like to com to recommend that uh, the students and the academicians should focus on manuscript, especially Malay manuscript as, as their primary resource for research. Okay, what is meant by manuscript? Manuscript is basically materials written by hand. Whether it is a, a, a written on a piece of paper or written in the form of uh, a book basically but basically the most uh, important criteria is many is books or papers written by hand because we have to understand that in the olden days there were no printing machine whoever want to uh, write something they had to write by by hand. Uh, only uh, in the context of uh, Malaysia, only in, in the last 200 years, we have printing machine. Otherwise, if authors would like to write, they write by hand. And uh, besides that, when they write by hand, uh, there are many uh, many characteristics that we have to try to understand uh, because it is based on the mastery of the authors uh, in writing and mastery of the authors in uh, creating, expressing his or his opinion about what he want to write. So uh, next, I would like to uh, 
uh, to go to the history of Istek Library. Istek Library uh, was uh, set up in one nine one nine eighty and uh, was uh, officiated in one nine eighty one. So, as we understand, Istek by its name. Uh, which stress on civilization and also Islamic talk, focus more on the uh, studies on Islamic civilization and Islamic thought. And uh, the, uh, the history of the, uh, of the uh, Easter, is uh, was very much related to the library because I was uh, an of higher education, including inst institute or uh, universities. They cannot uh, survive if there is no library. Library can be considered as the heart of the. Uh, institution of higher education. So, in other words, what I want to say is that library was set up together with the estate. With the estate uh, in the same year, perhaps in the same day. And in the course of the collection, uh, building We had to appreciate uh, the contribution of the early pioneers of the ISTEC, especially the Honorable Professor Said Nag Nagib Al Atos, who was not only spent his time to build up the, the institute, but also to build up the library collection. Uh, the collection in the estate library, as we all know, is very large and uh, consisting of so many different materials. Uh, even in the collection of manuscript, there are many collections of manuscript in Arabic, in Persian, in Uthmania, in Hindi, and also in Malay. The most, the largest Islam, uh, Islamic manuscript collection uh, are in uh, Arabic and also in Persian and Hindi. Uh, Malay manuscript can be considered as not only uh, Malay manuscript was the smallest manuscript collection in estate library. However, we we uh, I was informed by somebody who worked in estate during that time why is that don't buy many, many Malay manuscripts. And according to him, he said, during that time, the National Library just set up the National Center for Malay Manuscripts. So the uh, authority in Estet Library feel that the money should be uh, used to buy other manuscripts because if we need Malay manuscript, we can just go to the uh, Malay Manuscript Collection, uh, Malay Manuscript uh, Division of the National Library, uh, quite near to Istek, and we can get all the information or, or all the manuscript for doing research. Uh, however, that happened, the collection of 
the the collection of the first phase of the manuscript was done during the early history of the estate library but uh, about 15 years ago the, the estate management decided to buy a few more manuscripts in the market and as a result of that now we have uh, quiet uh, uh, a reasonable number of Malay manuscripts in estate collection so far according to my uh, according to my uh, calculation, uh, the library has 97 volume of Malay manuscript. We use the term uh, actually uh, for volume. Uh, we use the library term for um, books. They are written by hand as codex. So uh, today, uh, the estate library has eight ninety-seven uh, codexes or volume of Malay manuscript. However, since uh, many of the of the volume or codexes consists of more than one title, according to my estimate, there are about uh, 260 or 270 titles of Malay manuscript in the 97 codexes. So, considering uh, about the uh, the number of title we can say that we have a reasonable title of malay manuscripts and as i mentioned earlier the collection in estate library is con so is considered as uh quite uh, important because um Quite a number of them are considered as rare titles, rare titles, or maybe one or two can be considered as titles that cannot be found anywhere else. And while uh, reading through the manuscript, I uh, tend to have to form an opinion that. Uh, in the earlier early days of uh, writing Malay manuscript, we can find many manuscripts that were translated, translated. They were translated from Arabic to to Malay, and in later year, in later years, we can find uh, the the tradition of translation. Uh, did not continue and in, and was uh, uh, was changed to in the form of shara. That means the author of the Malay manuscript they take uh, certain uh, uh, sentences of, from uh, Arabic book and they wrote long explanation about the subject's concern. And my general interpretation is that uh, in the 17th century, most of the content of Malay manuscript in estate library were on Tasawf, Tawhid, and Fiqh, in that order. Tasawf, Tawhid, and Fiqh, 
the 17th century is the period w when Aceh was can be considered as the center for writing Malay manuscripts. In the following uh, century, 18th century, I can, I would like to say that uh, most of the Malay manuscripts were on uh, Tauhid, on Fiqh, and Tasawuf. That means Tasawuf become less important, but Tauhid more important. But and in the 19th century, we can find fiqh very important, followed by tawhid and Malay Islamic practices. This is uh, Malay Islamic practices is uh, something uh, quite new. Uh, what is meant by Malay manuscript practices is that they are the coverage of the Malay Islamic practices, as I uh, uh, want to explain, is it is on medicine, on azima, on dua, on astrology, on self protection or kebal in Malay, make our skin uh, uh, the 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 spears cannot. Uh, uh, can uh, uh, we are protected from uh, uh, spears uh, by practicing self protection uh, as written in Malay manuscript and also uh, sex. There are sex according to Islam. So these are the. Um, basic uh, approaches that I can uh, uh, I can find written by the Malay authors. And uh, about the uh, the 17th century uh, which uh, I mentioned here, Focus on the South, Tauhi, and Fik. This century, actually, it, uh, most of the authors were from Aceh. Uh, the most famous were Hamza Fansuri, Nuruddin Arranari, Abdul Rao Sinkel, and a few others. So these people. They are very, very close to the royal court. The royal court. And they are wrote uh, many serious matters, especially uh, on uh, Tasao, Tauhid, which uh, were undertaken on the advice or, or on the directive of the uh the kings or the sultana or the sultana uh in the 18th century uh the authorship of Malay ministry were more widespread including those from uh, palembang including those from south sulawesi all this uh, and also uh, South Kalimantan and also from uh, Sunda. 19th century, we can find uh, more widespread authors, including those from Malaya and from uh, Fatani. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, that uh, because I was uh, uh, interested to uh, know more about the uh, collection, uh, first, I uh, when I was teaching in Gombak, Department of Library Studies in Gombak, from time to time, I 
uh, requested my student to visit estate library and do some simple catalog, simple cataloging, which covers the title and the author, the subject, uh, the origin of the manuscript, if, if they can uh, find them. Uh, however, when I I move uh, my service to estate sometime in in one nine one eight, I uh, started improving editing improving or editing the simple catalog written by the students. Uh, and I give the, uh, the, the the title of my proposed catalog as annotated catalog. So from that time until today, it was uh, basically a slow process. And uh, it is, uh, I consider now is almost finished. Uh, more like uh, trying to double check certain information that I find it uh, uh, not sure. So, uh, why I, I did this uh, annotated catalog? Because I find that uh, when we meet the researchers, they always mention that it's, it is very difficult to study Malay, uh, Malay manuscript. Not only that there the, the, the were no catalog, that, that even the other information are a bit uh, difficult to identify, like title, author, material, subject field, provenance or history of the manuscript, watermark, and even reliability of the information. And I had to uh, accept that when we catalog Malay manuscript, we had to face many challenges. One is to identify the name of the title, to uh, to to know the author, to know the date the manuscript was written, the existence of all Malay words, the usage of all Malay sentence, all Malay sentences, and even the handwriting of the authors. Uh, so this is a, a sample of a catalog that I have, uh, I'm doing right now. It's not very clear in the PowerPoint presentation. Same thing, not very clear. Uh, Toward the end of my presentation today, I would I would like to say that uh, relationship between Islamic manuscript, between Malay and Arabic, between Malay and Hindi, Malay and Persian, they are quite uh, closely related because. Uh, they are more or less uh, interchangeable uh, of the of the tradition of writing and tradition of uh, uh, decoration uh, tradition of uh, writing materials and even the tradition of book making like us like us uh, before we were Islamized, we used the Sanskrit language and Pallava script. Then after we convert to Islam, we 
put aside all those non-Islamic writing tradition and we accept Islamic writing tradition by developing our Jawi scripts and by I mean by decorating preparation of uh, papers for writing all this uh, by uh, by borrowing the technique used by the Arabs and the Persians and the, the Indians to the extent that when we are prepare cover for books our book cover or binding is almost like Arabic binding. It's like Arabic binding. The stamping and the stamping and the, the flat, all that. So uh, I want to go back to the earlier part. So I would like to uh, to talk a bit about the special collection in the uh, special ministry in the Malay Ministry Collection of Estate Library. One, we have Sha'in Sidam Fakir. Not many libraries have uh, Sha'in by Hamza Fansuri. Uh, National Library, I think they have a few. Uh, but we have one here. See, Sha'in Sidam Fake, it is uh, written by Hamza Fansuri. Uh, the content is about his uh, Wujudia doctrine of Sufism, whereby uh, Allah is very close to human being, closer closer to us than what we think. Uh, uh, I cannot uh, go into detail because this is uh, a bit uh, uh, difficult to explain. <laughs> this Kitab Hil Al Zil, it was written by Nuruddin. Arraniri who disagree with uh, Hamza Fansuri. He said, Allah is not uh, a makhluk. You cannot consider Allah as uh, so close to human being. Uh, so he denied that to the extent that he said Hamza, Hamza Fansuri teaching is none what non-Islamic who profess this wujudiya uh, doctrine should be considered as kufur. So uh, these are some of the arguments. And uh, this one Kitab Dar al Qahra. I do not know of anywhere having this manuscript. I cannot remember a, 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 a Malay manuscript with this title Dar al Qahra. Even to read the, 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 the title, I find it very difficult last time until I had to refer to somebody. Kita Bustan Asalatin Bab Tuju, Bab Seven. It, it is a, a the seventh book written by Nuruddin Arraniri with the main title Bustan Asalatin, but 
bab 7 or the seventh book partly contain uh, about the Malay medicine. Malay medicine. So, uh, what is special about this is that it's not just telling about what what product to collect and how to prepare. He also, uh, the author, Nuri As Arun, uh, he also give guidance on how to identify people with the uh, sickness. By looking at the people who are sick, they, uh, it is said that uh, we can know that whether he has sickness in the stomach, sickness in the brain, sickness in the feet, or whatever. And one student right now is doing masters at master level, uh, transliterating and uh, uh, trying to. Uh, 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 to understand the content uh, of this Kitab Bustan Al Salatin Bab Tuju. And as I mentioned earlier, Malay binding, if we look at the Malay binding, it is almost like Arabic binding. However, we have to, uh, to, to, to understand that in general, Malay kitab were seldom bound by this what, goat skin binding. Normally they were uh, bound, bound by clothes or, uh, or bound simple in simple format by songket, all that. I think uh, I come to the end of my talk today. Thank you very much for all who are, who are here or online uh, to, to try to understand the collection in Estate Library. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Wan Ali, for that insightful presentation. So now it's time for our audience to engage. If you have any question, please raise your hands and our volunteer will bring our microphone to you. When asking a question, please state your name and um, from where you are. And for those joining online, you can do so by asking through chat box. Please. I think the one question from YouTube. Uh, the question is uh, from Rosmiza. Are the manuscript in this library really originated from Tanah Melayu, Malaya? Okay, the, the question is uh, that the uh, are there Malay manuscript in estate library originated from Malaya? The answer is yes, but they were they were, they are quite few. I think about five or six from Malaya. What I can remember is that one two manuscript were from Klan from Kelantan, written sometime in uh, around 1900 uh, and written on a, on a paper uh, with a elephant watermark. So we had to look into the 
watermark book and I, I find that LFM watermark was a paper specifically uh, made in Europe for a con for a company in Malaya. Uh, uh, that's from Kelantan and uh, they were also from Johor. They were also from Terengganu. Uh, I think one from Penang, and uh, maybe about five that I can remember. And definitely, if the meaning of Malaya also cover sa southern Thailand, uh, definitely there are many, many manuscripts written by uh, Abdullah. Uh, by authors from Patani. Uh, okay. Okay, another question, uh, Doctor. This one from Doctor Prof Kalik. Okay. Um, he said that thank you, dear moderator. Can the learn speaker share what is Speciality of Saint Adalatas Library compared to other libraries as well in the clown video. Okay, thank you, Prof, for the question. I think uh, uh, my interpretation is that uh, is that library or what we call now Said Muhammad Najib al Antos Library is special compared to other library because uh, they have uh, collections in many fields that other libraries do not have the, 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 the collection or the books. Even in the context of, of manuscript, we have Arabic, Uthmaniya, Persian, and uh, uh, Hindi in the thousands. I guess in other library, we uh, cannot find them uh, in such a numbers. And even about the, the Malay manuscript here, we we can say that we are proud of having a limited number of manuscripts, but they are valuable and old manuscript. In the context of manuscript, the older you are, the more expensive, the more valuable you are. The same thing with the other collection. I think uh, the journal and the books we get we, we uh, the prof naji alatas tried to collect them in the past many of the books are rare book that we cannot find perhaps in other libraries and when we want to study uh, um, something related to history something to related to literature, something to write uh, humanities. Uh, we need all all material for our research, not 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 just the the letters, but also even the all all material. So I think that is the speciality that uh, we have with the collection in East Tech Library Prof. <laughs> Okay, there. One question from here. Uh, Assalamualaikum, Doctor. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for a very fruitful uh, presentation about the Malay manuscript in uh, uh, Sheikh Muhammad Nakib Anatas Library. So, uh, the question, my question. Uh, is there any manuscripts written in the 20th century 
And can we consider those uh, writings, uh, if so-called manuscripts, uh, consider it as manuscript? And the other thing is that, is that I would like to ask about um, the oldest uh, Malay manuscript that we do have here in the Syed Mahmud Nakib Anatas library, as compared to the, maybe at the National Library or the Archive Library, uh, what is the, the oldest that we do have over here? Okay, thank you, Dr. Uh, thank you, Brother Fazli. Uh, uh, to answer the oldest Malay manuscript in Istek Library, I think uh, the, there were quite a number of manuscripts written in the 17th century, like the Shah and Sidan Fakir. I think it was written in 1670 or 1665. Uh, like those Hil Al Zil was written in uh, during the time of Nuruddin al raniri and uh, Bustan al Salatin um, but seven also written during his lifetime mm. so in that mean it was written in one uh, about the middle of the 17th century however uh, I'm quite uh, uh, quite certain that uh, the other collections in the estate library, although they were not written in the 17th century, but many those written in the 18th century are considered uh, valuable and uh, what old materials to be considered as old material. Uh, however, I, I had to explain that even if this manuscript were copies that were written, uh, copied by students of the ulama concern, but many of them are copied not long after the original copy was written by the author. Uh, that is my opinion. Oh, I think, uh, yeah, the many, you see, according to UNESCO interpretation, a, re, a handwritten text can be considered a manuscript if it has reached uh, 90 years old. Uh, so that is the principle that uh, we had to ad adhere to. When a, a, a handwritten text reached uh, uh, the age of 90 years, we can, we can consider them as manuscripts. Uh, however, not all handwritten material can be considered as uh, manuscript because they should have certain quality, uh, heritage, uh, uh, they should have uh, set, uh, from the certain quality from the perspective of subjects, from the perspective of uh, of government, from the perspective of diplomacy, etc., etc. You cannot consider text written by a child in primary school as, as a manuscript because we, we suspect the quality, heritage quality might not be there. But if Hang Tua has written uh, a text even uh, on simple, simple term, we can consider as manuscript because it was written by an authority in our history. 
that's my opinion. Yeah. Thank you. Any question? One more. Uh, there is another question by me by my by myself. Okay, uh, for these uh, years and even the last years, we are aggressively promoting uh, the collections of uh, Sheikh Muhammad Nakim Alatas, including this manuscript. And then this manuscript actually uh, it attract only certain groups of people, certain group of the students, only postgraduate students, and even only selected researchers. Okay, uh, from what we are doing uh, right now, uh, and you as uh, the, what we call the lecturers over here, uh, what do you think about our promotions and also marketing? How effective is our, our promotions eh? and also marketing to our collections here in Mamalaki Atas? And from your points of view, since you were at the National Library as the Ketua Pengarah over there, and even right now your lectures are over here, what is your wisdom? Uh, and also our next efforts to attract more and more researchers and even uh, the people out there, not only in Malaysia and even from overseas, to come and also do their research on our collections here, including the manuscript. I think it's a challenge for me uh, to explain uh, because uh, it's a bit difficult to explain. I think uh, in order to promote manuscript as uh, research material, I guess many uh, many group or many side has to to cooperate. One, for me, for the library, they should have a reasonable catalog so that when people come, they know what is inside the library. Uh, and th th there are enough uh, uh, reference materials relating to Malay manuscript uh, in the library. And I think, uh, and when they request a uh, uh, manuscript, it should be given to them uh, quickly to show, the, to give the confidence to the, to the world be researcher there this library can handle future challenges in doing research. Uh, on the other hand, I think what I find it uh, a bit uh, difficult to understand is that uh, uh, many of the would-be researchers, they say without properly understanding the manuscript, they will offhand, by offhand say, difficult to study manuscript without really going in detail about the material. Difficult uh, to, to read manuscript, difficult to understand the, the, the word, the sentences, the manuscript are not clean. Uh, uh, the library are very restrictive when we want to touch them. All so many things. Uh, and thirdly, I think uh, there should be uh, enough uh, academicians in the field for the students, the would-be students, to go and ask for opinions about about the subjects. I think three different groups should work together. That's all. Another question.
no the maybe a tough question or not i'm not sure <laughs> so this one from masdi shuko i uh, said that salam doctor what is your comment on recently malay manuscript found in netherlands which they claim that uh, the earliest malay manuscript since now no Uh, actually, yeah, this is the first time that I heard about the claim by the Leiden. The, huh. But this is the first time that I uh, heard about the claim. Well, if they say they are, they 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 claim is the oldest, they had to prove it. And uh, in this field of uh, manuscript studies, we cannot accept any claim without verification. Without verification. But it's good to get to have the news that there, there's a, an old Malay manuscript exists there. And I, I'm not very surprised because the dash was in control of the Indonesian archipelago for so many hundreds of years. So uh, there is a, a, a possibility that they have acquired the manuscripts. That's my comment. So any question? Tadeo. Tadeo. Okay, thank you so much, Dr. Wan Ali for a wonderful and fruitful presentation. And on behalf of organizing committee, we want to express our appreciation to Dr. Wan Ali for sharing his uh, valuable insights. Uh, thank you to our audience too for your active particip participation. We hope you found today's lecture informative and thought-provoking. And now uh, to remark our appreciation, I invite Brother Fazil Omar, head of the library, to deliver a token of appreciation to our speaker. Please.